it is no secret that I'm not the biggest fan of fighting games. Berserk ready! But even I was able to enjoy the undisputed GOAT of them all. Tom and Jerry War of the Whiskers Knockout! Robot Cat loses Tom wins! Tom and Jerry is just such a goaded series man the cat and the mouse doing the most out of pocket things to each other every single episode was an amazing formula for a series I consider an absolute classic at this point. I, uh, I used to always root for Jerry heavily because I considered Tom the bad guy trying to catch an innocent mouse. Uh, but nowadays I realized Tom was just doing his job as a cat and Jerry was doing the most foul shit to him for no reason. Regardless of my enlightenment, uh, the series slept back then and still slaps my cheeks today. It's surprising how well these episodes hold up. I mean it was a gigantic success worldwide uh, for a reason. This cartoon really was him. As per usual with any successful series, it was now time to milk it in any way imaginable. And thus, amongst many other things, it was gamified into oblivion. Which, uh, to no surprise, considering the cartoon's nature, included a bunch of fighting games. It all started with Tom and Jerry, Yankee Doodle's Catastrophe for Microsoft Windows. Which, uh... It uh, sure was something, alright. It would be followed up by a 10 year hiatus, after which, on November 2000, a much better and well designed game on a much better and more powerful system in the N64 was released, called Tom and Jerry in Fists of Fury. I retract my statement. Now, the reason I'm mentioning any of this is because War of the Whiskers is Fist and Fury's direct sequel. Uh, I, however, have never played, owned, read, or watched anything about it, and neither do I care enough to do so. Meaning, if you're here for the sole reason of <laughs> How, how do these guys compare and <laughs> what did it improve upon, guys? I, uh, I got nothing. I owned and played War of the Whiskers only, and thus I'll only talk about War of the Whiskers today. Lil Bro Me used to play this game quite a bit after school, with my friends or with my sister either rotating the controller while taking on the challenge mode or smashing each other's skulls in in a good old a 1v1, having the time of our lives doing so. Now uh, I've been fairly critical of fighting games in the past, both in terms of content and longevity, slowly coming to the conclusion these types of games, they're really not meant for me ok? So, uh, how does Tom and Jerry, War of the Whiskers, differ from any of these games? It, it doesn't. But I grew up with this thing, and thus it's different to me. 
So let's biased opinion praise it like it's a gift of God himself. Or am I? Tyke, ready? <laughs> Butch, <What>? ready? <laughs> Fight! Tom and Jerry War of the Whiskers is an arena fighting game where Z Cats and Z Mouse, alongside other legendary Tom and Jerry characters, and Robot Cat, uh, smash each other's skulls in until either one's health bar is depleted. It's not a game with a story mode or any lore attached to it. You can just pick any of challenge, versus, tag versus or tag team from the main menu and start punching small mice in diapers. Knockout! There's obviously a multiplayer focus here as the game can be played with up to 4 players. But to unlock the characters for these modes, you'll have to survive 4 fights and the boss battle with every character in challenge mode. Considering I have no friends, I was relegated to just that uh, this time around. And uh... Yeah. I still really fuck with this game. I mean, I won't pretend this is like the best fighting game in existence, but they tried their damnedest to give it that Tom and Jerry aura, and uh, shit turned out really well, if you ask me. But yeah, uh, there's no denying that it's a basic bitch fighting game if you erase its Tom and Jerry label. To pummel your opponent, you can use triangle to punch, square to kick, circle to pick up items and enemies in docking mode, hold square to increase power and square again to release and throw. Yeah, you can duck to lower the damage output from enemy punches and projectiles, but I never really found myself in a position to do so. I'm more of a the best defense is hyper offense kind of guy, you know. And uh, that about covers it all. <laughs> there aren't really any cool move combos or anything. Aside from pressing X plus square to uh, bang pancakes on fools. Oh, and of course, there's this. Berserk <laughs> ready! <laughs> By pressing L2 and R2, you can taunt your opponent which alongside handing out damage to and taking damage from your opponent, uh, fills up the berserk meter. Upon full you can press the same combination to activate big Angie mode and take less damage, do more damage, be protected from getting flattened and fast charge item throws. It's a cool idea to reward putting yourself in a vulnerable position by taunting and give anyone the chance to claw themselves back from a seemingly unwinnable position. But it's so fucking powerful and destructive that the best way to utilize it is by waiting until your opponent activates theirs, so you can essentially negate it. And uh, thus render the whole mode useless. If you don't, you can try your hardest to run away, but the movement isn't precise enough to outrun your berserk opponent, and even a single hit does a fuck ton of damage. Not to mention taking a single hit, often being followed up by an additional two, as you'll briefly be stunned upon contact and are sometimes completely unable to escape. This moveset and lackluster special mode are understandably a deal breaker to some. But uh, not to me. I'd say everything else pulls its weight uh, well enough to uh, render the scanty combat a mild nuisance at best. It's just... It's just the Tom and Jerry-ness, man. The clown-ass stupid fuckery bullshit that makes the cartoon as legendary as it is, is exactly what makes this game more enjoyable than it should ever be. Everything from the map design to the items to the character animations has those good old cartoon antics to them. 
Each of the 13 available arenas is located in a stupid ass location. And I mean this in a good way. You'll be beating up a small duck in an Italian village, a mouse in a kitchen, a lion in the wild west and a robot cat in Frankenstein's lab. Everything about these choices of locations and their map designs just adds a whole lot of value to this game. Even like the names before you load them up. Uh, Frankenmouse, Chow Meow, a fridge too far. Before even playing, you already know you're in for a treat. Because of the arena locations and themes, the arena items and gimmicks are themed as well to fit their respective locations. There's this squid wrapping its tentacles around the boat, uh, this dragon heating up a castle, these ghosts popping up to hang out in a haunted mansion, all to add a bit of a twist to each and every level. These are events that occur every 1 to 2 minutes or so, some seemingly occurring more frequently than others. Bye, have a great time! I especially like the ones with additional effects, like League Cement crippling you, or Halloween, turning you into a snowman. You don't have to wait for these events to occur to cuck your enemy with what are essentially status effects though as the arenas themselves often have similar effects for the player to manually activate. You can throw Spike into the scrap grinder at the junkyard or in the local fireplace. <laughs> but there are also the more subtle environmental effects like throwing your opponent at a wall and having a moose head fall down on them or cement bags flattening them. Effects which are replicable with the available items as well. Every arena has its own set of themed throwables and melee weapons, and while they are essentially reskins of one another, I just love them so much, man. The kitchen with its eggs, tomatoes, steak forks and hams. The wild west with its glass bottles, dynamite, shovels and pitchforks. The lab with its flasks, hourglasses, projectors and electrical sticks. There's even a super secret Omega Cool item in every level that will only spawn once a decade and isn't even that cool. But who cares? Shit's honestly fucking great. The melee weapons will i.e. pancake, confuse, electrocute or burn your opponent by either getting hit thrice or fully charging the item with square and hitting them once. The throwables mostly just have a simple knockback effect, but some have similar effects, with i.e. this bomb burning your ass. If they don't get caught mid-air by spamming circle and swung right back at you, that is. Charging them up to full is once again worth your time and vulnerability, as these things too don't just do more damage, but also gain the additional effect of IE helmets and skulls gluing to their heads for a brief period of time, making them unable to move and very additional damage flattenable. Yeah. I love how wacky this shit looks. Hell, I love how wacky and cartoony everything looks and sounds. The game's animated yet 3D look, alongside its smooth usage of colors, is a perfect fit when it comes to mimicking the feeling of the cartoon. The levels themselves are full of detail and little nuts and references to the cartoon, uh, like this Butch Wonder poster but also leave more than enough room to move around and destroy it all uh, while you're at it. Yeah, you can, you can do that. This doesn't just make the arena look like an absolute brawl has taken place, but has the purpose of unlocking costumes for the characters upon destroying the entire arena. The character to costume ratio isn't one to one, Every arena has like a couple costumes for a couple of characters to hand out. 
but if you collect them all, you'll end up with 4 for Tom and Jerry, and 2 for the rest of them. And, uh... Well... <laughs> see for yourself. Look at like little Jerry with his winter fit. Tom the Wild West Cowboy. Duckling the Hunter. If you hate these costumes, you hate fun. Kinda sucks that the outfits can only be used in multiplayer modes. Uh, kinda sucks that the outfits are limited to just 6 out of 11 characters. Kinda sucks that 4 out of 6 characters are limited to 2 outfits. But man, I love the character it gives these already character oozing characters. <laughs> the decently sized cast of 11 characters representing the cartoon uh, look and sound great. The delivery of the oohs, yees, ahs, and other battle sounds is convincing as fuck, and the animations are cartoonishly humorous. Stuff like these stupid little taunt dances and the flickering between the skeleton and the normal appearance upon getting electrocuted, shit just never gets old. But my undoubtedly favorites are the win and loss ones at the end of the round where they either bawl their eyes out or gloat after taking the dub home. Best one being Butch, who manages to make himself look like an absolute asshole, even when celebrating. Butch wins! And it's this type of cartoon bullshit that makes this game click with me. It's, it's just a funny game. Where the game lacks in depth and fought through mechanics, it excels in making me laugh with its stupid ass antics. The combination of the arena gimmicks, themed items, comical animations and the smooth as butter cartoony audiovisual presentation altogether make this much more than the bare bones fighter hardcore fighter game fans would probably label this as. It's just an enjoyable experience in my eyes. It's what I would have said with no regrets if the game wasn't so damn unbalanced. Some of it on purpose, most of it because... I uh, honestly have no fucking clue how they missed any of this. There's the character size based hitboxes, which pose a problem for obvious reasons, and renders half the roster inferior. But the AI seeing and grabbing items that are out of your field of view every single time and abusing the brief invincibility cooldown by picking up items and throwing them just before it wears up, so you either don't get to throw yours or release it too early and hit their invincibility mode, might honestly piss me off even more. Not that any of it matters, because even with those disadvantages the game is way too easy on its hardest mode. I think I lost like 2 games in best of 3's throughout the entire campaign. And uh, that was because this stupid little dipshit diaper mouse abused its hitbox and invincibility mode to combo hell me to death. Loses. Nibbles wins. The fuck just happened? The truest developer moment is the boss fight at the end of every character campaign, though. You'll be battling it out in Das Frankenhaus. The first one being a robot cat. Not only is he unable to pick up items, thus making him the worst character in the game that will never be picked. But he also... Uh... Is, is he having a stroke? The other is Monster Jerry, whose Frankenstein-inspired design is cool and all. 
But sadly, once a little bro means always a little bro. And thus, he shrinks into normal Jerry after his powers run out. It is then that Jerry's dumbass AI switches motives, prioritizing drinking this flask that will transform him back over anything. And I mean, anything. And uh, this animation can be interrupted by simply damaging it. Berserk ready! And thus, every single fight uh, looks like this. These boss fights are pathetic. A pathetic end to a campaign plagued with small hitboxes and AI abusing its damage buffer cooldown and knowledge of item spawns, but it's far too easy anyway. They straight up massacre the coolest characters in the game by making Jerry a drug addict and Robot Cat obsessed with spinning in circles, only to get his ass whooped once he's dizzy. It just... It just makes me a little sad, man. Despite all that, I fuck with Tom and Jerry, a war of the whiskers. While the game doesn't hold up as well as my stuck in 2003 brain thought it would, my main gripes with the game stem from the game's campaign mode. As a multiplayer fighter to 1v1 your friends, I'd still say this is that good shit. Dead. As long as you make an informal agreement to pick characters of the same size, none of the issues listed should be a problem, as it's mostly AI related, making it an equal playing field. Robot Cat being so fucking bad does sting quite a bit though. But uh, I'm sure he'll do a great job at warming the bench. Other than that, you're just left with a fun as fuck fighter. Sure, the movement is basic and the items only go so far until they resort to reskins. But uh, it's a blast witnessing all the cartoon gimmicks, stunts, effects, celebrations, goofball outfits and the dynamic environment, complemented by solid voice acting and funny sound effects. Not to mention the banger OSTs for the different levels. Both my ears and eyes were grinning all throughout. Really like the addition of a customizable rule set too, even if it could have used some more game changing shits uh, rather than just a round timer and rounds played and the two multiplayer only levels where the main focus is to either throw each other off the map or brawl it out without items are pretty cool as well. It all adds a bit of an extra twist if so desired. And while the campaign mode isn't optimal, the issues didn't ruin it in the slightest. I, uh, I still had a good time, for as long as it lasted. The developers putting the most sluggish character in the game against the 5 tiniest hitbox characters in the game on purpose is a fucking federal crime though. <laughs> I did about have my fill after I don't know how many hours or so, uh, but <laughs> that's just me with every fighting game ever created. There's only so much you can do in a game like this before Monday feels like Tuesday to Sunday. If you're a hardcore fighting game fan, you'll probably absolutely hate this game, as it does nothing inventive or in-depth. But uh, if you're a normie like me and just want to mess around with your friends and beat each other up with goofy characters and a pig on a stick, this game is fun as fuck.
they also made Spike cosplay the devil. So it's the best game of all time. Case closed.